right, let's stand just for a minute. Uh, say with me, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Welcome those watching online, those of you that are home and so forth. We just want to bless you. We thank God for His healing in your lives. We thank God for protection watching over you, that uh, uh, you're going to be safe. If you're not feeling well, you're going to get better and better in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We welcome those watching from India and Africa, uh, Asia, from Europe, from the United States. We welcome you as, as well online. We just want to bless you, appreciate you. You send comments and so forth, and Pastor Jeannie gets to... Uh, uh, comment back and so forth. Remember, our hours are different than yours, day and night, all right? So sometimes when you send something, it's our middle of the night. But uh, we just thank God for your communication and that you're being blessed and encouraged. We thank God for your ministries. Hallelujah. So I'm going to share a little bit today about faith and patience. But first, I want to share a scripture from the book of Luke. We're living, the last days began on the day of Pentecost. And that was a prophetic word from the prophet Joel. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. In Luke, 20, Luke 21, verses 9 through 12, it says, When you hear of wars, commotions, do not be terrified. These things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he said, Nation will rise against nation. A kingdom will rise against kingdom. There'll be earthquakes. There'll be famines. There'll be pestilence, plagues. There'll be fearful sights. There'll be great signs that will happen. Before all these things, they'll even lay their hands on you. They'll persecute you, delivering you up to synagogues to pri and prisons. You'll be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now, these things aren't written to terrify people. They're written just this, uh, this is like the prophetic word from Jesus, that, that there will be things happen before he returns, like birth pains. Birth pains, uh, uh, he's not causing this, but it should cause in the world, all, every, every God that, or everything that can be shaken will be shaken. God is giving everybody an opportunity to look up and turn their eyes to him. Yeah. Amen. The heavens declare his glory. I mean, I mean you can't, uh, uh, every, everything that you look at speaks of God. Everything, everything created came from the Lord. So it came from someone who made it all. Well, that's, that's Jesus Christ, the word that was spoken that, that created the heavens and the earth. Uh, don't, be, don't be alarmed, you know, in these days and times, you hear in, in the body of Christ, all kinds of prophecies. Oh, this, this earthquake happened. And so now God's saying this. And folks, I always, I always just roll my eyes because earthquakes have always been happening, all right? And, and because we have social media, you can know in the next five minutes if an earthquake happens someplace, or storms happen, all right, or there's fires, or there's plagues, or all these things. Folks, all these things are already in the Bible. So when Christians, and let me just be real clear, when quote-unquote spirit-filled Christians prophesy of this happening and so forth, just, I'd say, tear it up. Disregard it. Most prophecies are reactionary, Okay. So someone, something happens, and then they prophesy, oh, yes, and the Lord is saying this. Why didn't you say that six weeks ago? If you know so much, why didn't you say this six weeks ago? Don't react to things. Prophetic things are forward speaking. So Jesus is speaking prophetically forward, saying these things are going to happen. I'm just going to tell you now so that you don't have to be alarmed. Of all people, Christians shouldn't be alarmed. Shouldn't, Christians shouldn't be terrified. This is our hour to be witnessing. Okay, so the world is going to be terrified. The world can be terrified of COVID-19. Christians should not be terrified of that. Because the name of Jesus is greater than the name of COVID or coronavirus or cancer or any other thing. So Christians, when the world is terrified, should be the time when the, Christ, when the church is advancing. Why? Because we already know these things are going to happen. God has given you tomorrow's headlines today. It's been written in the Word. 
So for Christians to respond, oh, I don't know what we're going to, what's the prophetic word? So I, I always cringe when people say, what's the prophetic word? Folks, you got a book full of them. The Bible's full of prophetic words, and all of them are there to encourage us, not to frighten us, not say, oh, the world's coming to an end. I just think that's bizarre that Christians act that way because it's everything that Jesus isn't. He's all about peace. He's all about telling you ahead of time, this is going to happen, Dave, so when it does, don't be alarmed. Go back to the first verse again, verse 10. It says, these things are happening... Don't, do not be terrified. Don't be alarmed that these things are happening. I'm going to tell you that something's going to happen now. All right? Will there be more pandemics? The answer is yes. Will there be earthquakes? The answer is yes. Will there be hurricanes? The answer is yes. Will there be great signs and so forth? The answer is yes. So when it happens, though, and your neighbor is alarmed... That's your ding, 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 ding bell to say, hey, Jesus gives us peace. That is the time for you to have your mouth open. Not to act like the world. Oh, oh yeah, we're just like that. What are we going to do? I'm shocked at the terror that Christians exhibit. And they act no different than the world. I'm shocked. When we of all people know the truth, already been spoken. I'm not listening to these prophets today, folks. I'm not listening to all the judgment critics out there. Not listening to them. Amen. The body of Christ, the Lord spoke this, the Lord spoke that. Folks, he did not. We heard another one yesterday. Someone said, then God this, this. No, he didn't. I can take it right now. Tear it up. Old Testament. Didn't say that. Didn't do that. Not doing that. Not killing people. Not harming people. Only doing good. Amen. Wherever you're at in the world... You should know that Jesus is on your side. And he is never causing harm or destruction. And he is never hurting somebody's life. Read the New Testament because when he broke the bread and shared the wine and so forth, he says, this is my blood, a new covenant. And you're in a new covenant. And that is good news. Can you say amen? Amen. Okay. Faith and patience. Psalm 34. David sought the Lord, and the Lord heard him, which is wonderful news. Amen? God hears you, folks. I want to tell you that every time you pray, God hears you. I want to tell you 100% of the time that you pray, God hears you. I want to tell you every time you open your mouth, you're calling on the Lord. He hears you, day or night. Now, the question is, is we have to believe that. Amen. So David sought the Lord. He heard him. God delivered him from all of his fears. But that didn't change his circumstances immediately. So there's a thing in the Bible that we have to understand. Process. Faith and patience are inseparable. The two go together. So from the time that David is called, anointed of Samuel, the oil is poured over his head in front of his dad and his brothers and everybody else, until the time that he's actually established in, his, in the king, to be a king of Israel. And so forth, Judea. So the time that that happened was like nine years, a long time. Process. So, so did David give up? No, David didn't give up. Psalm 130, verse 5 through 7, David says, my soul waits. Wait for the Lord. My soul waits, so I'm going to wait. Now, my soul, your emotions have to wait. Your mind has to wait. In other, words, in other words, most people get caught up in this. I prayed, I sought the Lord, I fast, I did this. And so now they got mind battles because they don't see the answer. Now, everybody's going to face mind battles because everybody has a mind. <laughs> your mind, your brain is a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. However, it has to be tamed to the Word of God. Otherwise, your mind will run wild. So he says, I waited for the Lord. My soul wait. I'm going to wait no, no, I'm not going to get worried. I'm not going to get anxious. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to be discouraged. My soul waits. In his word do I hope. Now, there again, we have a book full of promises. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I love the Bible. I've read it, I don't even know how many times, cover to cover, many, many dozens, dozens of times. However, I still read it every day. 
I still get in it. I'm still going through pages and so forth. I still see notes from yesteryear, from some year that something spoke to me, and I think, oh, I remember that. I've got things underlined and so forth and starred, and then I see something new. I think, oh, I didn't see that word before. Wow, that's a good word. That's a nugget. So in his word do I hope. Amen? Amen? So because, folks, because I know the word of God, let, let's be clear, he's already written the end, right? So these the beginning and the ending. He's the alpha, he's the omega. Now we have choices in this life, but the end is already written. And the good news is we do win, and the good news is we do go to heaven, hallelujah. So there's a lot of good news in this book, all right? There's a lot of good news about life. So in his word, I hope, my soul waits for the Lord more than, than those who watch for the morning. And sometimes people are in such a battle. And it's got, I don't know if you've ever been there before, but I've had nights where it's like, I wish we could get to the morning. Yeah. He, says, he says, my soul waits for the Lord. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning, O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord, there is mercy. And with the Lord, there's abundance of redemption. So David's just saying, you know, in spite of all these things, I know Samuel prayed over me. It's five years ago now. I'm still waiting, Lord, but I'm just going to trust in you. Well, it's been seven years from now, or ago, but I'm still waiting, Lord. I'm going to trust in you. Saul's still trying to throw javelins at him, still trying to find him, you know, in the forest, still going around the mountain one way or another. But I'm going to wait on you, Lord. Now, this is a good message for everybody in the church. I'm not talking to the world now. I'm talking to the church. A good message. Faith and patience, everything, process. If you're going to build a car, years ago, we went through a car factory down in Fort Worth, Texas, I think it was, and they were building, I think, Chevrolets or Pontiacs on this assembly line. And so as we went in and so forth and, and could had this tour of this plant, and you'd see them putting, assembling this, this automobile. And of course, even when they took a door, that door had already been assembled someplace else. And they'd put it together and so forth. And then they attached the door all while it goes on this assembly line. And everybody's doing their part. But it's a process, isn't it? It isn't just like, okay, car. No, it's a process. Even the creation, he spoke the world into existence, but there was a process. Created the heavens, right? Created the heavens, he created all creation and so forth, man, woman, all that. There was a process to it all. God is a process God. God is an orderly God. Feeding the 5,000, 4,000 was all a process. He had a plan. He, he prepared all the way and so forth. We as people, especially Americans, like things to happen now. Now, we're, we're in a microwave society, and the microwave doesn't even work fast enough. We get fast food, and they're not fast enough. Come on, come on, I've been waiting in this line. And so we want, we want things now. We're trained this way. We're geared this way in our minds. We pray a prayer. I want to, I want to know right now. I prayed 15 minutes ago. I haven't, heard God. I haven't heard God. And people get upset with God. People get upset, and God's just saying, hey, I'm not your problem. See, we have to deal with our flesh. We have to understand there's a process. We have to understand... Living the Christian life is a lifelong journey. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to arrive when I'm 40 years old. All right, we got that taken care of. No, we're still, still moving along. And sometimes the older I get, the more I realize, man, I know so little. God is so big. And so it's a process, just like we understand, we understand things in the natural. Okay, you build a car, that's going to take some time. If you build a house, what do you do? You lay a foundation. You dig a hole and you lay a foundation. There's a process. It wasn't like, not like snap, okay, there's the house. No, we, we understand that, that there's a process to wait. Turn to your neighbor and say, wait. You can't get irritated when you understand that, no, it's, there's just timing. If there's three cars ahead of you in the line, you can't honk, 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 honk. You can't get irritated. irritated. You know, they got to go through first. There's a process for them to go through the window first. Isn't that right? The other day, we were, we were in a line and so forth. And it was one of those two-line deals. And I was going to go. And then the other car went right out in front of me. And I thought, okay, well, they'll probably get our food. I hope, we, I hope they have good food because we'll probably get theirs. Who knows? But we got our own food. But you know what I mean? They were in a hurry processes in life. So we understand, if we understand this in the natural, we can understand that we can understand the supernatural. Yeah. Amen. Some things take time. And we can read the things, the stories of Jesus, you know, miracle, boom, 
Miracle, boom. Those are healings, and we want to believe all the time for that, right? Live in the now, live in the presence. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time for healing. Amen. Now it's time for miracles. Always believing for that. But there's a lot of other decisions in life that are processes. Psalm 40. Psalm 40, verses 1 through 4, says, I waited patiently for the Lord. So now, here's an adverb that tells them how they waited. We have to understand, you're going to wait for a lot of things, whether you like it or not. All right? So the question is, is how are you going to wait? Are you going to wait in a place of praise and thanksgiving? Hallelujah, God, you're good, and you're working. Hallelujah. Or are you going to wait in a place of grumbling? So we have a choice. One, so one way or another, we're in this process of waiting on the Lord. And David says, I'm going to wait patiently. Okay. So he's not tapping his foot at God. He's not coming the next day. Hey, 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 I claim that promise. Where's my answer? He's not, he's not acting that way toward God. He's there to worship. I thank you, Lord. You're faithful and true. Your word never fails. I'm going to trust in you. So he says, I waited patiently. He inclined to me. Now, I, I like this, you know, like he's leaning down, he's hearing your prayers. I just want you to know today, God hears your prayers. He hears your prayers. He does. And we have to understand, have to understand that process. He's heard you. He's working right now. See, and our flesh says, well, I don't see it. Well, just keep waiting. <laughs> keep trusting. Amen. So he inclined, his ear, he inclined to me and heard my cry. So David had this reassurance in his heart. Thank you, Lord. You're, you're working. And peace is a good thing to have. Amen? Reassurance. And he brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet in a rock and established my steps. And God is an expert at that, to deliver us out of the quagmires of this life. You know, it could seem it's not, it wasn't a pleasant pit. It was a horrible pit. Don't get me wrong, when David was called, it wasn't like he's just walking around all the time like, hey, I, I know it's going to happen and so forth. No, he's running for his life. He's running for his life. And so he had faced a lot of adversity. And so he, he emptied himself before the Lord. You know, I'm just a person. You are too. And he emptied himself before the Lord. And, he, and God brought him up out of this pit, this horrible pit, set his feet in a rock, established his steps, put a new song in my mouth. Now, of course, I just think David was always singing, and he was always singing new songs. Sometimes God will give you a song that maybe you know, but sometimes God will give you a song that you're just making up. But you, I want you to understand something. If you're making it up, if it's praise to the Lord, it's not you making it up. It's the Holy Spirit. So when you're praising God, and maybe you're singing something you never sang before, that's the Holy Spirit. It's not just you're just creating something, making it up. No, it's the Holy Spirit. So he put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and trust in the Lord. Now, I think when it says many will see it in fear, many are going to see it like, wow. Folks, in the midst of adversity right now in our country, and it's not just our country, it's the world. Keep in mind that all the things that people face or talk about the United States, and of course in America, it's all, it's all about me, America. <laughs> Nobody thinks about the world. Folks, the world is in very difficult situations. All right? Very difficult. I mean, people can talk about plagues in the United States. It's, it's even worse many times amplified overseas. And then not only that, people can talk about governments. But folks, let's also face it that, that we live in such a blessed place, millions of people are trying to get here. <laughs> Amen? People can say, oh, this is just terrible. Oh, things have never been that bad. Those are all lies. Those are all lies. Our country has our country's gone through much adversity through over 200 and some years. But around the world, let's understand that things are worse yet. So we should be thankful. Amen? We should be praising God. We should appreciate what we do have. All right? And, and keep in the, the right perspective. So, so people will see, though, the blessing of God on our lives. I'm not living in fear. I'm not worried. Right? I'm going to trust the Lord. My grandkids picked that up from, from Pastor Jeannie and I as well, you know, about different things and school situations and so forth. They pick up the vibes from us of walking in the Spirit, walking in the peace of God. Therefore, they are not afraid. Not afraid. Walking in the Spirit. And it says, I'm going to trust. People will see it and will trust in the Lord. Other people will see it and be encouraged. 
by your faith. Be encouraged by what they see in your life. Blessed is the man that, that makes the Lord his trust. Does not res- God, and God does not respect the proud, nor such that turn aside to lies. So David is talking here. This is persevering faith with patience. Now, we saw that with Angela. With her, she was sick for 12 years. So we continued on a daily basis, never get away from sickness, a daily basis of believing, of trusting, of praying, and so forth, of standing in the midst of adversity, going to doctors, treatments. Some of those treatments are experimental treatments, all these things, sometimes just to try to save her life. And so we, and you'd have to sign off on that, that we could have this happen, could have this happen. But we're trying to save her life. So we're praying, we're believing, we're trusting. And of course, then, then of course, you can have things like, boy, we haven't seen that answer. But then little by little, she got better. She got better. She got better. Then, folks, I'm not saying it has to take that time when it comes to healing, but I'm just saying don't quit. Don't quit when you think, oh, this battle's been too long. No, no, don't quit. You know, we're living out a life for Jesus. Other people will see it and be amazed. Other people will see it and be encouraged. It's like when my brother met the doctor at KU Med Center again that was the nation's leading physician on this, and she knew a lot of things. And when my brother met her at a medical conference years later, and then he came up to her and introduced himself and then said that Angela was his niece. And she looked at him and Doug said, I knew she wanted to say, did she die? She died, didn't she? You know, thinking that. And Doug said, you know, because there's a little pause. And then he said, she didn't die. She lived, she recovered. And she was like, her eyes were big, like, wow. Become a testimony. Become a testimony for Jesus. Life is a process. We're walking through this process right now. Hebrews says this, Hebrews chapter 6 says, Through faith and patience they inherited the promises. The two are inseparable. Through faith and patience. Don't be, don't be weary, don't be sluggish. Imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. I don't want to listen to fluff. I want to, you know, there's a lot of people that can say things and prophesy and do kinds of things. But I really want to know, I really want to know, how are they walking on Monday? I really want to know, what's the character of their foundation? Words, words are great, all right? Don't get me wrong. But the other side of it is, what's the character of the foundation? Because that's what you want to imitate. Those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. All right? Those who are standing through thick and thin. Those might be a good day, might be a bad day. Might have a lack of finances, standing, praising, living. That's a key in life. Right? Again, we want it now. I, there's a commercial. It's so irritating, you know. It's so irritating. Yeah, and, and you know, people get a settlement because of an injury or something. And so you have this settlement that will pay you a monthly payment for maybe the rest of your life. And so then you can call this company and you can have a, you can settle with the company. You can settle, sell your settlement and they'll just give you a lump sum of money. And of course the premise, the, the commercial is it's my money and I want it now. And it's like, yeah, and you're stupid enough. You'll burn it up the next month and then you don't have anything. That's the world folks. That's the world, but it's their money. I should have it now. It'd be good if you didn't. But that's how our world lives. You know, people want things now. You can, sell, you can sell your life insurance policy, for that matter. If you have cash value, sell your life insurance. They'll say, hey, we'll give you that cash, and then we'll cash in as soon as you die. You know? And we'll get all your money. Yeah. See, think about life in a matter. Don't think about, like, oh, this is it. I want it right now. Think about, Lord, I'm going to trust you no matter what. I'm going to trust you no matter what. Remember the scripture, it is a promise, by the way. It's one of the promises I don't like claiming, but Jesus referred to it, that in the last days, people will persecute you. Paul said, all who live godly shall suffer persecution. I don't like that that statement. (laughs) But the other hand, folks, all over the world today, people actually are dying for their faith in Jesus Christ. Again, in America, we live in this little bubble. 
So America, we get kind of twitched like, hey, they said something bad about me. I'm thinking, boy, if that ruffles your feathers, you've got a lot of growing to do. And the church has a lot of growing to do because the church gets screaming mad about all the little, little tiny things, and it's not even about their witness. It's just about maybe a law or something like that. We need to understand there's things we're going to face more and more. I'm just telling you that, okay, so in other words, when someone's persecuted, it sh- should it surprise us? No, it shouldn't alarm us. It- it's in the Bible. You-, you know how it'll be in America. It'll be the, you got all the big publications. Wow, the church is facing this and this. And it's like, yeah, well, the church has faced that for decades around the world. For hundreds of years, they faced persecution, hardship. I mean, I, I come back and I'll tell stories when we've been places and People hear, they, people can hear the story, oh, okay, yeah. No, no, really, the reality is people, areas we've ministered, they've killed the pastors, okay? That's a reality we walk into when we walk into some of these places. They've killed the pastors. This isn't a story, and it isn't futuristic, it's history, okay? We leave, and one month later, pastor's dead, hung in his church, Okay, this is the world. Now, so what do we have to do? We have to, we have to understand, I have to grow these faith muscles. So I'm not weak. I can go to the gym and I see somebody like, wow. I mean, they're, they're just, they have muscles that I didn't know existed. That got <laughs> developed and rippled out of their skin and stuff like that. It's like, wow. Now that didn't happen overnight. He didn't join the club last week and became buff. Didn't happen that way. That person's obviously spent time in the weight room, all right? Eating right, exercising, doing things, and it's like a a tremendous specimen. You could use him in anatomy class, just a live person, you know? I mean, just, well, there's this muscle you didn't know existed. (laughs) Takes time. Growing faith muscles takes time. Go down a couple verses, verse 14 and 15. Oh, we're here, there. All right, so God made a promise to Abraham. Swears by himself. He says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply you. And it says, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Now, again, he, he, it says how he endured. How did he wait? He waited patiently, right? Through patiently endured, he obtained the promise. But now, again, that wasn't, that wasn't like last week here. That was 25 years when you're young, boy, you don't like hearing things like this. Oh, boy, you know, so I've got to wait for things, you know? But the reality is, that's how a lot of life is. If you get a degree at the university, there's a process to get the degree. You know, you're not going to show up, pay your money, and they're going to hand you a degree like, hey, voila, I got it. They're going to go through a process to get the degree. That's, that's how it is. If you're going to cook something, if you're going to cook something, uh, you can take the ingredients. So let's say you take the pan and you take, you got to put in flour and you put in some sugar, maybe a little baking soda and you put in the oil. And so you got it all in the pan, right? And then what do you do? Now it's all just laying there in the pan, throw in an egg or two or so forth. And do you just throw it in the oven? No. All the men say no. <laughs> Process. The process, well, then what do you do? You got to, well, we have mixers now, so, but you mix it up, right? So you mix, you mix the, the flour and the sugar, cookies, I'm talking about, you know, flour and the sugar and the, and the egg and the oil, you mix it all up, all right, and you get it consistent, right? Now, if you threw it in the oven, as it was without that, if you just threw it in the oven, what are you going to have? You're going to have kind of a stinky mess. Kids are going to come by, what's this? Oh, it's cookies! They're going to go, no thanks. I'm not eating that. And who would blame them, right? You just, you just cooked, you cooked the ingredients, but you'll never, you'll never succeed unless you mix the ingredients. Nothing good will happen until you mix the ingredients. Now, Scripture in Hebrews 4 says uh, that we mix faith, right? Hebrews 4, 2, we mix faith. Gospel is preached to a lot of people, but... The word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. So nothing will happen until you mix. 
There has to be a mixing of faith. Think about this. How many thousands, tens of thousands of people were around Jesus? Well, we know right off the bat there was 4,000 plus men and women, and there was 5,000 plus men and women who were fed, who saw the miracles, and people healed, and all the people in the street, and so forth. So thousands and thousands and thousands of people knew about Jesus, met Jesus, maybe experienced his love, maybe experienced healings. But the fact is, only a small percentage of them followed him. They didn't mix faith. A lot of people bumped into him. Very few touched him. So you have to take what Jesus said. You have to take the Bible. You stir it around in your spirit, man, and you mix faith. Now, part of that mixing of faith comes through praise and thanksgiving, and you're stirring it up. Now, wouldn't we like, of course, the kids would like cookies. I want the cookies now. Right now, right. Well, and of course, any parent or grandparent's going to say, no, <laughs> you'll wait. So you're going to wait for the process of the assembling the ingredients, mixing together the baking until it's ready. Same thing with our faith. You have to mix faith. It's a process. Say process. We don't like the process because that we don't see anything. And that's, that's what I'm saying. We don't see anything, but there's still a process. You're giving praise and thanksgiving for the answers before you see the answers. Let's look at another one in the book of Luke chapter 8, that we produce fruit, good ground and so forth, but uh, they heard the word with a good heart. They kept it and bear fruit, produce fruit with patience. So the apple trees, our neighbor had an apple, a apple, lot of apple trees. The apples are just everywhere. Just, it must be a great season for apples. And they're good apples, sweet apples, taste great. But that didn't happen overnight, did it? It wasn't like, hey, it's, it's summertime, there's apples. No, no, it happened a process. There's leaves, there's blossoms, and a little bud and so forth, a little tiny apple. And so that little apple grows until it's ripe. And that's when you pick it, right? So you bring forth fruit with patience. We understand fruit production always is a process. Had a grapevine. And the grapevine would, would start with little green grapes and so forth. But wouldn't you know it, the birds knew exactly when the grapes were ripe. And as soon as those grapes were ripe, you had a free-for-all picking my grapes. You know, just, just eating them up and so forth. But they didn't do it when they were green. There's a process. And so they understood the process. Now, as believers, we have to understand there's a process. The process is not bad. The process isn't like, oh, God wants to hurt you. No, the process is that we're in the word, we're praising him, we're believing him for the answers. The open door and so forth, that's the process. So in the middle of the process, you're still in victory. In the middle of the process, your soul is still flourishing in Christ because you understand the process. When a woman becomes pregnant, a woman becomes pregnant as soon as the seed and the egg come together, all right? She doesn't even know it. So, but as soon as the seed and the egg come together, there's a conception. And that's when a life is formed, right? Life is, some people say it's formed when it's delivered. No, it's formed at conception. That's when, it, that's when there is a baby, all right? And God already knows that baby then. At that point in time, right there, you wouldn't even see it with your eyes. But there's a baby there. There's a conception. Said that the seed and the egg came together. And then there's a process, and then at a certain point, a, a woman realizes that she's with child. And then there's a process that they know, well, the, it's not like they say, wow, well, let's see that boy today at two months. Probably not going to see him, right? Or four months or whatever. There's a process that we, the normal process is nine months. They said to Abraham in the book of Genesis, according to the time of life, which we know is nine months, I'll return and you'll have this baby. There's a process. Now, in the meantime, you have a boy or you have a girl, and you can celebrate, hallelujah, feel the movements and all those things, but you don't see that baby until the process is complete. And we understand that, and so it is with our faith. Amen? Amen. So the time that we pray, seed and egg come together, until the time of the manifestation, when the baby is born, is a time of faith. Spiritually talking, all right? So we're believing for things to happen, amen? And you don't want to, in the process, when you don't feel anything, you don't want to abort the promise. You don't want to quit. You don't want to say, God didn't do it. No, God didn't do it. No, there's no answer. I don't see it. Well, a pregnant woman would say, you're crazy. No, there's an answer here, <laughs> all right? 
A mama would say, no, no, you're crazy. The cookies are in the oven. It's happening, all right? They'd understand something is happening when even you don't see something happening. And something's always happening in the Lord. I love that about God, all right? Hebrews 10, so a couple more verses, but Hebrews 10, you don't want to stop believing, and that's the temptation. The enemy attacks us, discourages us, and we think, boy, nothing's happening, and we want to quit. In Hebrews 10, 35, it says, don't throw away, don't fling away your confidence. Don't throw away your trust in God the very time when you need your trust in God. Amen? In the middle of the battle is not the time to say it doesn't work. No, in the middle of the battle is the time to raise your voice like we're singing. Amen? Amen. So don't throw away your confidence. It's that's a glorious and great reward. That means the end product, if we don't quit, where you're going to see the answer. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to see the answer. You're going to see the answer. I guarantee you, you just don't want to quit. We've been through so many things, thick and thin, in our lives, physically, you know, uh, spiritually, financially, all kinds of things where we could have quit. Could have thrown in the towel, surrender, I surrender, I'm, I'm done with this, I'll go do something else. But I'm glad we didn't. In the midst of it, you know, you keep hanging on, that, that, that white knuckle faith. Now, the promise, it says, you have need of patience. You should underline this in your Bible, all right? This is very, very important. Hebrews chapter 10, verse uh, uh, 36. You have need of patience. It says patient endurance. So the thing is, you know, we want to say, I, I need the answer. And the Lord says, no, you just need patience. Just wait. Just wait on me. There's maturity that happens as we wait on the Lord. We're building our faith muscles. Amen? We're building. It's all a process. If I go to the gym in my present state, haven't lifted weights in a while, and I lift weights, and I'll probably be pretty stiff, but if I go to the mirror, I'm still going to look this way, you know? Muscles are still going to look, my mind could think, look at those muscles. No, I'm still going to look this way, all right? It's a process to build the muscles. It's a process of faith. So we have need of patience, all right, in the middle of that, so that when you have carried out the will of God, now this is very important, you should underline this in the Bible, because people say, well, you just haven't done the will of God. You know, you're not in the will of God. You get all these Christian experts, I call them armchair quarterbacks, that know so much, that have lived so little, but they know the answers about everything, and they'll tell you how you're wrong. Folks, when people tell that to you, don't even listen to them. Don't listen to people say, well, you don't have faith, or you're not in the will of God. Don't even listen to them, all right? You just stay in the Word, stay with Jesus, stay, stay in fellowship, amen? Because that's a key here. Because after they've done, they've carried out the will of God. And they've already, so in other words, they've done the will of God, but their need is now for patience. Okay, goes with faith, yes. People say, well, you need faith. Yes, obviously, but, but you've done the will of God. Now you have to have patience to wait for the answer. Now you're not doing nothing. No, you're still praising, you're celebrating, reading the word and so forth. So that you may receive and enjoy the full what is promised. So if I quit too early, then I'm done. I've, I've aborted it. No, I quit. A lot of pastors quit churches, quit ministries, all kinds of things. Quit, quit too early, really. Should keep, keep going. Keep persevering. People, marriages, people quit too early. People, well, we don't get along. Well, you did it one time. What brought you together? Start, start cultivating what brought you together. So you know what I mean? Things in life, anything that's good, the devil's going to fight. Anything that's of God, the devil's going to fight. So therefore, you have to be determined, I'm going to stand in this midst and believe the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Doctors, doctors to our face said, you're mo the most amazing people that we've met. And we said, well, why would that be? And Angela had like five specialists on her case. We said, well, why would that be? And they said, well, you know, you're not, of course, depressed, but you're still married. And they mentioned that you're still married. And we thought, well, why is that a big deal? And they said, because all these things tear marriages apart. Husbands and wives begin to fight each other and so forth uh, because you have ongoing sickness and you face bankruptcy and you face people fight. And we looked at each other and said, yeah, we're still married. Yeah, we still love each other. Amen. Become a testimony. So notice that the need was for patience. And they'd already done the will of God. So now the Bible says in Ephesians, having done all, you stand. Amen? Amen. Keep, keep standing, keep believing, keep, keep trusting God. Colossians 3 says, you'll receive the reward. And I like this. 
So, so uh, you're, do, you're working as under the Lord, knowing we shall receive a reward, an inheritance from the Lord. Well, you'll receive a reward. You'll be blessed. You'll get the answer. Amen? The door will open up. The Bible says in Matthew 7, ask, seek, and knock. I like the Amplified because it says ask and keep on asking. Don't stop. Keep, you know, keep going. Amplified. Ask and keep on asking. All right? Seek and keep on giving. Now, notice it says it will be given. So that's futuristic. It means it might, I might not see it immediately, but don't stop believing. You're seeking means that maybe, maybe you don't find the answer right away, but you keep on seeking. You'll find it. Knock. Keep on knocking. The door will be opened unto you. Now, this is a key thing here in verse 8. Everyone. Say everyone. everyone. Say that's me. Everyone who asks and keeps on asking receives. Everyone will find. Everyone. Doors will be open. Not maybe exactly how we want all the time, but the point is God is answering your prayers. And through faith and patience, you're going to see the manifestation. It's going to happen. It's the same way in any country. This Bible is not an American book. It wasn't written by Americans for Americans. It's a Middle East book. It's a cultural book. It's for you. And the Word of God is for you. The promises are for you. And when you pray and you call on the name of Jesus, and I know that might even be new to some of you, but even in the place of your own house, you can call on the name of Jesus Christ, and He will hear your prayer, and He will manifest Himself to you because He loves you. Amen? God loves us. That's the good news. Amen? So, so let's lift our hands here a second. Father, thank you for the faith you give us, because you're the author of our faith. And Lord, thank you for the patience that is coming in, in our spirit man and in to, uh, to control our flesh even, Father. We thank you for the patience, Lord, that we stand on your promises. And we thank you today for victory. This is the victory, even our faith which overcomes the world. We thank you today for victory in the name of Jesus. I thank you for answers manifested answers to prayer, Lord, in this place, through people involved in this ministry right now, manifested answers to prayer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for helping people who are discouraged. Holy Spirit, helping people who are thinking of giving up. Lord, help them just whisper even in their ears right now, just hold on, hold on, keep going, keep trusting, keep praising. Lord, thank you today for the answers, and thank you for your help, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you say amen? Thank you. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. A couple of verses back, I just felt that there's a few people in this room that Jesus wanted to say to you, mm. thank you. Thank you. He wanted to say to you, thank you, yeah. that you didn't give up. That's right. He wants to compliment you. Yeah. And he, he wants to just yeah. tell you that he appreciates yeah. that you stood there. Yep. You're standing strong. Yep. You didn't Amen. throw in the towel. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. And that with faith and patience, just like that last verse that said, you'll see a glorious result. Amen. Amen. So there's just some people in Amen. the room that, I mean, just to think of that, that God yeah. himself just Amen. wants to say to you, thank you. That's right. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for yeah. staying in faith. That's right. And while you're at it, that you've had a, a cheerful attitude. Yep. Amen. That's a good word. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. Hallelujah.